is. Yep. Dom Daniel. Dom Daniel. We're live. Yes, we are. We're live now? I think so. I think we are. It All seems, right. yeah, for sure we are. Hey guys, welcome to, I don't even know which episode is that, 42. Damn, time is flying. Crazy. Dude, I f I'm so glad I have you here. Because I, I thought about, I think we've been talking about it for a couple of months or a couple of months ago. I've asked you and he's like, yeah. you said yes. And then I got busy and then you got busy and <laughs> sort of like fell through. That's and now, now we're back at it again. Yeah. Yeah. And this time it's happening. Uh, for those who are listening to us, you might be hearing some background noises. It might be my daughter screaming, mm. screaming. She, she just learned to scream. So. <laughs> she does it on many Old occasions. She um, she's 16 months or something like that. Crazy. So, yeah, it's time is flying, dude. It's insane. Yeah. I'm just gonna quickly inform my friends at social media that we are live, and uh, we can start the conversation. I think what we should start with. I mean, a majority of people that are joining us already know who you are, and if they don't, they should get out. Just oh. get out. Don't list, like unsubscribe and do something something uh, else. I haven't been very active online <laughs> in the last few years. No, so. you, you have like if someone doesn't know who you are, they should get the fuck out. <laughs> Seriously. Yeah. It's yeah, I can like, do a little introduction if you want. Uh, yeah, <laughs> let's let's do it. Let's sure. get so, you let's get you introduced, who you are. What yeah, my you've name done is so uh, far. Matthias Verhasselt. I'm uh, um Currently, art director at uh, at Blizzard uh, Entertainment, the game company, and uh, I'm working in um, what's called now Blizzard Animation, which used to be Blizzard Cinematics. Uh, right. I've been over there for about ten years. Um, I started there as a concept artist first, did some matte painting, then went back to concept, then uh, slowly kind of got interested more into maybe doing art direction, and so I've been doing art direction for two years now. Uh, before that, I was um, I was working in France. I'm originally from France. Um, uh, I started professionally as a 3D artist. Uh, I really like 3D. Um, and uh, like about mm, about 2003, and um, worked in a small shop doing all kinds of stuff, kind of being a generalist, which was really interesting. So I got to see a little bit of um, the whole pipeline from like concepting, modeling, texturing, animating, rendering, everything. And uh, on all kinds of different projects, and uh, slowly I kind of got more interested in doing concept. And uh, then I started. I wanted to try working in video games, or working in a game company back in Paris called Darkworks, for about a year. And then I did some freelancing after that for about a year, also on video game projects for different companies. And then I moved to the U.S. So um, yeah, I'm. I uh, yeah, mostly concept artist now. Um, as a and as art director, I get to paint a little bit still. <laughs> I, yeah, which is not the case for everybody. Often, yeah, for I'm sure. Not, you still have time to paint. I, I still get a chance. I think we have a pretty good team there with the production and stuff, where I don't really have too much to do, um, too much spreadsheets and stuff like this. We have a good team, and so I still get to do some keyframes and a little bit of design even um, from here and here and there. Um, yeah, maybe you could yeah. click some of that. Beautiful, juicy sketches. Sure, I can. I can show some of some work. Talking about work, I have. I don't have too much work stuff here. Um, but like the things I was mostly doing, um, back in the uh, wow, in the in the days at Blizzard, it was like uh, oh shit, slow. Damn, it's low res actually. Fuck. Uh, anyways. Fail. <laughs> yeah, I don't have much stuff at home. Um, um, but it's like I was doing a lot of color scripts for a while. Actually, that's kind of what um, for the last. I would say for, I started as a concept artist with design, and I did a little bit of matte painting, and I mostly um, um, focused on color, color keys, color scripts for our cinematics. So this was uh, for uh, um, StarCraft, for the, the Zerg expansion, uh, mm -hmm. Heart of the Swarm. That was the intro cinematic that was actually um, art directed by uh, Jonathan Berubi, that you know, right, I guess. Yeah, I know Jonathan very well. And, such, a, uh, such a cool dude. Yeah, really cool dude. That I, was should, awesome. I should get him here too. Yeah, for sure. He's, he's great. He's that was down really, for sure. That was a really fun project. Uh, I think that's probably one of the funnest projects I, I worked on, I think, at Blizzard. 
Um, it was just really cool to work with John on that. And um, Vitaly was working on that too. He was doing some of the, the, the mechs and stuff. It was really yeah. fun. It was a fun project. So this is what I um, spent a lot of time um, at Blizzard. Um, like there's another one here I have for, uh, that was for Diablo uh, 3. Um, this is not low res. Um, this was for um, uh, the expansion of Diablo. Um, right. And um, shit, I haven't seen that work yet. Yeah, I don't know. Actually, I don't even know if I posted that. But <laughs> you are like this. I've been always bugging you, like, fucking Matthias, post your work. <laughs> for fuck's well, sake. I mean, it's not too much. Too much. <laughs> this one I, I can show because it was it was in one of the art books, and there's not right. too much things that that we can show. Like I worked on so on, on the, the the Warcraft movie for like a year and a half or something, but it's like I can't show anything. That but sucks. You should you should have gone to to be in uh, Art Directors Guild and then you would be able to show uh -huh. everything you want. Once the movie's out, you can because just like, like blast it out. That'll be right fun. right to see. Dude, those are awesome. Well Fuck. thanks man. Like, like this is like someone are like some I spent some time on and some are like kinda quicker, but it's um yeah, it was fun. Like those things took a while though to do. Um, yeah, but I, can I, was, I really like doing that. It's uh, and it, that's kind of I still do a little bit of this as an art director now. I do I don't do as much as I because this took like weeks to to do, but I do some a few keyframes here and there. Um, yeah, I want to ask you about the art direction, but before we do that, um, you know, I, I just wanted to say I, I remember I think first time I saw your work was on Seijin forums. Oh yeah, you, yeah. You school, must yeah. have been on that. Captain I think everyone, <laughs> everyone was yeah. there. <laughs> I remember you from there too. Yeah, it was. Uh, who else was there? It was so many, so many veterans that are out there right now, been on this. Yeah, I remember I mean, when I was like one of the first ones, right? I mean, it was yeah. like one of the first forums that were where you, there was other digital artists and uh, that and like concept art. But even Sijun was is older. Like I think Sijun was wasn't it starting like in '99 or something? Yeah. It's very old. I didn't go. I, I, I think I started going there in maybe in 2002 or three or something like this. But yeah, it was 2003 when I when I discovered it, uh, and I was like, "Who's that Spooch Demon guy?" <laughs> yeah. God damn, he's so good, so good. I remember, I remember like seeing all the amazing work, and I much like you, I started with 3D as well. Like I was like, yeah. 3D is max, 3D is yeah. max, and I nerbs modeling because I was stupid, and then I was just like never worked out and. Ah, I'm gonna stick to drawing. <laughs> um, it's funny, funny stuff. I remember uh, talking to uh, David Levy when I met him for the first time uh, mm -hmm. when we were for dinner or something like that. And I and I said like, dude, I, I remember that I met you for the first time, like your work and everything on Seijin. Uh, when I, when I, as soon as I said Seijin, his eyes just like quadrupled in size. <laughs> Yeah, it was, it was the old so days, funny. man. It was yeah, cool. yeah, good old days. Yeah, it's crazy. It's like there's so many people now that I know that was all just that I've met now in person, but it's like people that I just met online on those forums. And uh, yep. yeah, it was really good times, man. I kind of miss those days, but it's like you feel like today, I don't know if that could even exist anymore because it's, I mean, it, you know, there's like good things and bad things, right? I mean, yeah. I think it's the, the way everything is connected today is amazing, right? Like that you have so much resources and you can access, like you can just chat with all kinds of people so easily. But yeah. like there was something about having this feeling of small community that you had before that kind of felt like, whoa, I just discovered this little corner of the internet and <laughs> all those amazing artists and it kind of can try to be part of this small group. You know, it was really, it was really fun. I totally agree with you. It feels like the whole entertainment industry just exploded in size. And that comes to how many artists are, are, are out there too, mm. or maybe we're just so connected right now that we just didn't realize there. there yeah, so many I think we're them. just more aware of, of it now. You know. Yeah, it's yeah, yeah. Be aware of how big it is and how many amazing artists there are everywhere. You know. Yeah, and I think the uh, experience that, or, or or the fact that people can experience the the connectivity, is more inspiring and gets uh, gets artists to post more and and be more active. Mm -hmm. I think it's really good for community anyways, you know, as much as you can go and say, oh, uh, you know, going on ArtStation or DeviantArt or any of those forums, it's like everything is copy of a copy. It's still like the base, the base quality of the work. I remember like... Dude, like it's literally. fucking nuts, man. The, the, the level now is, is crazy. It's exactly. Like, um, yeah, it's, 
like, yeah, I mean, you, if, if you could go back in time and post just a couple of the things that, you know, that are posted today and you just post that on <laughs> Like, people fucking flip well, out. Oh, and some people are like, "Holy shit! This is what crazy. is this? Yeah. What?" Yeah, it's, it's I want to quit. It's been interesting to to witness, you know. Yeah, it's, it's people have gotten nuts, like really progress as fuck. Holy yeah. shit! Yeah, I agree. Well, one thing that was striking to me when I when I saw your work, it was just the style of it. Uh, you and, and David, and there was a couple of more. I, I, I could tell you guys are French because you had that very <laughs> dis distinguished uh, style of work. Yeah. Like the way you guys use you are using brushes and um, shapes and whatnot. There was always something intriguing uh, when I was looking at your work. Something that was always out there in terms of like how you sketch things, like how you capture lighting and oh, realism nice. of lighting. That was like not many artists could do that, you know. Um, and I don't know like what exactly your painting processes I, i've seen some of the live streams you've, do, you've done you've done some some live streams before yeah a little bit not so much. yeah yeah but you did one of those pictures that you're showing right now i think was during the live stream and it was crazy to me to see like where you start with like almost super precise anal almost like into the anal level of fucking well it's i have like, all kinds of different processes actually yeah like, like this kind of process with like super anal one is like it's hard for me to finish a picture and actually i can imagine why it's I think just... you're talking about uh, this one yeah, yeah 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 this one i was streaming the, the one i'm showing right now and it's actually not hell dude it looks like, like this i mean you zoom out it looks like photo dude but the for thing reals. is like, actually, this one is not finished because when i do a picture like this it's really hard for me to finish it because it's so long and painful that i after a while i just give up you know and and usually my 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 the stuff i actually do with stuff like this, for instance, so that I finish or this are like speed paintings because like I give myself a time limit or I just don't go too long and this way I get it finished because otherwise if I try to do something really nice, it's, I get bored with it, you know, it's really difficult for me to keep that's something that really like impresses me with your stuff because you can see that you're putting tons of time in it and effort and you, you oh, get... Oh, you would be surprised. <laughs> well, I don't know. Actually, I don't know. Maybe you don't, but it seems like it. And, and it's like you get a really finished product and stuff. And, and for me, it's like to get a fit... I, I can't do it, but it's like it's really difficult for me to keep the motivation to like to get a picture from... Um, yeah, from start to finish with planning and like... Yeah. Doing you it, don't like, use photos stuff, though, right? so that's the thing, so... Well, yeah. sometimes I do. Like, it's, like for my personal work, I don't really do much. Like I like to try to paint as much as possible mm -hmm. and draw as much as possible on my own because I want to learn, you know? I like to... Like I, I really enjoy the process of like being able to like paint something totally from imagination. It's just fun for me. It's like... Yeah. But like at work and stuff, I will use photos you yeah know, of course, uh, of it's, course. Just, it's just fast you know get you the, the thing as well. and in some personal work like for instance um like this picture there's like a little bit of tiny pieces of photos in this one like really okay. tiny stuff just for texture you know like this, right right it's like some of that stuff is like some iss like detail but it's like really texture stuff and sometimes i use 3d too like this one for instance i have like a 3d model of a mm -hmm. that i painted over you know but is that from nasa.gov yeah yeah <laughs> <laughs> uh, Dude, I worked in the one of the films that I don't know if it, if it's ever gonna come out at this point. I think, uh, or maybe maybe it will next year. It's been pushed and pushed around with a little bit of that NASA stuff going on there. Just kid, kid bash the shit out of it. <laughs> yeah, it's really useful. I've done a bunch of those things. It's really fun to kid bash with them. I have a few projects I've been working on, and I've almost like full 3D, but I, it's just taking me forever. It's the same thing. Like the reason why I I, I went from 3D to 2D. Because I, w I was like really into into 3D for 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 mm -hmm. a while, and like I mean, that was really my big thing. Like that's how I got my first job, and that's how I was online. I was like doing 3D on on CG Talk and stuff, and doing contests and meeting people and stuff. But it was really like at the time for me, it was like, and for a lot of people, it was not too many people that were using 3D as a means to make a picture, mixing it with other things. Like people who were 3D artists, they were making 3D pictures. You know, they were making like rendering like model texture pose you know like rigging pose the character light it and comp it and that's it and then that was the picture you know it was just posted i don't know if you probably remember right and the whole idea of using 3d as a as a as a part of a process is, is in a way at, at least in, the, in something that people do i mean there's already people doing it but yeah, yeah. It, it's pretty new right there was like i remember seeing for i don't know if you know you know loic right zimmerman 
Yeah, yeah, of course. I remember at the time, like, he's an amazing artist, and he was, like, he was posting these pictures that were, like, a mix of 3D and 2D, and it was so fresh at the time because it was like, wow, I've never seen anything like this because there was really not many people who were doing that. And I was, like, I was, I was really into 3D. I loved modeling and, and, and texturing and using, like, V-Ray and stuff and tried to make realistic renders and shit. But it just... It was just so long to get to a point where you could actually get a picture done that looked like an illustration, you know, mm, like it looked like yeah. a scene that looked like um, that looked like an actual picture, you know, and and because you know you had to model and like you know in symmetry, then you had to model asymmetrical, you had to UV, you had to textures. Every step was like at the time there was no ZBrush and shit, so it was like everything <laughs> was really really slow. And uh, and I think that was that was one of the reasons was like oh I, I really want to because actually I think going to see June actually. And seeing like the speed painting thread, you know, like the, the one the thing we're talking about, like mm-hmm. the typical speed painting speed painting thread with um, Craig Mullins and stuff. And I was like, damn, those guys are making a picture that looks finished in like an hour, you know, or something. And even if you know it's not super detailed, but the whole intention is there. Yeah. And that really like kind of opened my eyes to the power of like digital uh, digital medium for two D. Because at the time I wasn't really painting at all. I was like I was just using a mouse and. Um, like I tried a couple times to color things, but it was really like I would like scan a drawing, you know, then bring it in like the computer and then use the mouse, you know, and like color the thing. And I was like, this is really not for me, you know. And then like seeing these people doing this stuff online, like the, the speed painting, I was like, well, actually, that sounds really interesting. And that's when I really started to, to get into the digital 2D stuff. Yeah. How is your 3D right now? Do you Do you still like, investigating it or trying to use it or you, you yeah know. yeah dude. Okay. i i uh i mean let me see what i can show shit uh let's like let's stop sharing so i don't show stuff in the, yeah 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 let me, let me but yeah like I, I i i mean i do a bunch of 3d at home like i really i still love 3d it's really fun actually i do some fusion my a little first. bit um i started doing some fusion um i do some some studies and stuff in 3d are you should I do stop sharing actually in the meanwhile? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's my screen right now. It's my okay. beautiful, beautiful, amazing, amazing Showtime painting. Um, <laughs> I mean, I can show some. I'm joking. I, I, I haven't I <laughs> seen it yet, so I can say anything. I don't. No, see you can. Uh, Where you am can I supposed to see it in the, in that that go to meeting? <laughs> you, I just, I just removed the uh, the window so nobody can see it. You can still, oh. you can keep sharing. Um. So. Yeah, I mean, I, I really love 3D. I think, I mean, I use 3D at, at work pretty often, just for when I have to design things that are, you know, need like nice angles or repetition or whatever. Like if I had to design like a tech thing or whatever, I'll do it in 3D because it's just so much faster and so much use, it's so useful for just yeah, being colors or whatever. So let, me, let um, me know when you're ready for sharing. Let me grab the screen. I'm just. It should be hard to find out. Let's see where I can put that. Um. Oh, so you're into Fusion 360, huh? Uh, yeah, I didn't do too much yet with it, but I, I, well, you know, it's like, I feel, I'm not, su- to be honest, I'm not a big fan, but maybe I need to <laughs> do more um, um, uh, tutorials or something. I'm trying to co- coerce uh, Vitaly to... Uh, I want to try, I want to try more though, uh, I really want, because every time I talk to Vitaly about it, it sounded really interesting. Yeah, he's almost like a, a, a evangelist of Moi, for sure. But I mean, Moi is great, don't, don't get me wrong, it's fucking awesome software. It's just a little different. Um, I, you know, it's a matter of preference. I, I prefer uh, Fusion 360 more. It's just, it's just easy. It, it might not be, it might not have the same functionality. It has a different functions. I, I feel like both have their own strengths and weaknesses. You know. Well, yeah. Yeah. Like the, the thing for me with Fusion is, I mean, I don't. I guess I don't know it very well yet, but it's just. It feels the whole CAD aspect of it, you know, is like very heavy, you know, it's like, it's very counterintuitive for me, you know, like the whole like right. how you, how you that is just something I was into show, like just a study I did, I was doing. Okay, let me let me pull that up. Of the, like right, I mean, I haven't done much. I mean, there's things I'm I've been doing, but I don't want to show them yet, like some personal mm-hmm. projects. But otherwise, in 3D, I was just doing some studies, like some rocket stuff, um, like this thing. Is that kid bashed or? No, that's, I, I modeled everything there. That's yeah, I was dude. Like, I was like, it's pretty I mean, good. It's, not, it's not finished. Like you can see, a lot of, of the course. things are, are not finished. But it's like I was trying, like looking at all all kinds of photos. That's the second stage of the Saturn V and um, rocket. 
and I was just trying to look from photos and find like really good reference and for each part. And I was trying to be as accurate as possible. It's not finished though, but yeah. I don't know. It was just kind of like a project when I, I wanted to get back to 3D because I hadn't done like more. Like the, mostly 3D I do at work is very uh, super basic, right? It's like primitives with booleans and then I just paint over them, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just wanted to get back to like more of a, a little bit more clean modeling. So I was like, oh, I'm just going to do a project. I was doing that like a couple of years ago and I haven't finished it and I should finish it sometime. Yeah, I think I remember seeing that one sometime before. I think at some point I posted like a crop of it or something on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that was that's yeah. what that was it. And um, I've been doing other things in 3D, but I don't want to show them yet. It's just some some projects that I I've been working for like couple last like couple of years here and there, and it's just taking forever again. It's one of those things that <laughs> reminds me of the reason why I don't do 3D for personal work anymore. It just takes forever. It's like modeling, and yeah, and I was learning Fusion a little bit, and that was taking a while. And, um, but yeah, I love 3D, man. 3D is awesome. I think uh, it's there's there's something about 3D that in the beginning, it's gonna be grueling and and fucking annoying to do anything uh, that looks even remotely good. Um, the way the way I was approaching it and, and and using it throughout the last couple of years was just like looking through the balance of 2D and 3D and where mm. should I because it's so easy to start something in 3D and really go down the rabbit hole. Yeah. yeah and yeah. and you're just like I'm just wasting time right now. Like it's not even moving yeah. forward. Just, I'm not I don't have enough knowledge to to get it done the proper way. Mm -hmm. What should I do? And 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 oftentimes I do that and I end up in in this place where like it doesn't look any good. I have to roll back and use 2D and, you know, maybe photo bash something real quick because I wasted so much time. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. But the great thing is, like, the mo those moments really matter because you, you run into problems that you want to you wanna get solved eventually yeah. and sort of, like, grind through. Mm -hmm. And once you grind through the problem, you, 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 you get a solution that's going to work for a majority of times from now on. And also, what's what's what I've found out that the more three D I've been using in in projects, the mm -hmm. more library, the, the bigger the library uh, I had to oh, yeah. to work with, That's especially for shaders. Too, right? Yeah, it's like you can you just keep building these things that you can use again later. And it's, yeah, that's, that's a really great thing about three D. Is like, yeah, already like for me too. It's like I I was doing this other rocket or something. It's like, well, I can just use the engine that I made there. You know, <laughs> it's like it's there and it can rendering from any angle and. Yeah, yeah it's exactly. Super, it's super for sure. That's that's a great one of the great things about three D is just the Git Bash library and stuff that you can build. And same thing for shaders and shit. Yeah, it's really fun. Yeah, it just takes time to um, to sort of like get the baseline out there. Especially if you work for clients, it might be mm. a little suspect, if you will. What do you mean? Uh, like just you know how much time you're gonna take to make stuff. You know what's oh. the you know what's the worst experience to have. Is to be on the same project with Vitali and do, do doing three D <laughs> stuff. Yeah. You feel like an asshole, seriously. Yeah. It's like ah, oh, you just like de deliver that five renders that you did. They look amazing. Like you feel like shit. I've nailed it. And then you look at the folder that Vitali is posting with like fucking five models and two hundred renders, and some turntables, movies. <laughs> what, the, what the fuck? Yeah, he's a machine. <laughs> 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 and then That's crazy. and then director kind of calls you back like is that it <laughs> <laughs> why can't you do like the other guy there <laughs> yeah why can't you work yeah. as fast as vitali well, you should play your strength and do a full yeah. scene with uh, with lighting <laughs> and multiple character poses and all kinds of crazy effects oh my god they yeah just... <laughs> he's a machine for sure <laughs> it's really hard to work uh work in the same projects with him uh it's fun though it's, you, you learn you learn a lot of shit Mm -hmm. um, he has his own strength, he, uh, also weaknesses too. He's, he's not really a person that could do environment art. Uh, so, but uh, yeah, he's super badass though, for yeah. sure. Uh, what got you into? So that's that I wanted to get into that because I've been in, in the same position you've been before, which mm -hmm. is art direction, and I, I'll tell you, I fucking hated it. Oh yeah. Um, I'm curious what got you into it and how much you're enjoying it right now. Uh, for me, it was really just about learning experience mostly, you know, like kind of mm -hmm. seeing where I can go, you, you know, like I've been at Blizzard for, for almost 10 years now and um, I've been doing concepts for a while and 3D before and I I just kind of wanted to see like 
like getting into that more, um, being able to, you know, design design things more earlier, even in the process. You know, I always like that with concepts being it pretty early in the process of like finding ideas and and uh, you know designing things at the top level. You know, of like okay, this is how the show is gonna look like in terms of lighting and things right. like this. And it was kind of for me, it felt like kind of logical. Um, progression from there to like doing all the color script stuff and then trying to, you know, um, do the art direction. Because mostly for us, to be honest, a big part of the art direction is, is, is in there too, is the, the color key because um, like a lot of the, like since we're working, like for instance, on, on, I'm working mostly on Overwatch and, and mm -hmm. a lot of the designs are already done um, in terms of uh, with the game, you know, like they have amazing like designers there and, and a lot of the the characters are all, you know, designed there and the environments are designed. So sometimes we do have to design some things, you know, like mm -hmm. we'll have an episode and, and there's like some new secondary characters or new location or something. So we have to design it, but uh, there's not too much to do of that. You know, it's a lot, a lot of it is, is already designed. So we mostly as art director, you know, I kind of have to help overseeing the translation of that style into, into the more um, like the real, um, the pre-rendered stuff. And, and then, kind of trying to establish, talking with the director and, and, and all this stuff, establishing kind of the vibe that's going to happen. It's going to be in the, in the story, depending on the, um, like what we need, like the, the, the beats of the story and things like this. So, so for me, yeah, it was, I just kind of wanted to be also challenged into that more, doing more teamwork. Because mm -hmm. a lot of my, my jobs before, like as a concept artist was, very lonely in a way, you know, like, <laughs> which is fine, which I like too. It's like, you, you just, I mean, really the only person I was interacting with mostly was the director of the, of the show. And he was like, Hey, you know, do your color keys. And I was just, you know, just talking a bit with the director and art director. And, mm -hmm. and mostly, most of the time I was just at my desk and, and just drawing, drawing, drawing. And then once a week or something, I would just show my progress and I'm like, all right, cool. And then, you know, keep going. And, and it, it wasn't much like teamwork going on. Um, right. I kind of wanted to, to, to experience that a little bit more, like being more involved in, in, in the team and um, it's because it's something, it's just a skill that I don't really have had too much in the past. I was mostly just, yeah, like I said, like kind of lonely, just drawing. And um, so it's kind of a way to just get new experiences and learn new things. That's yeah. What so you're, you're currently art directing for the cinematics, right? Yes, I'm for uh, so I've been doing that for about a couple of years now. So I've been working on those uh, the shorts that we're doing for Overwatch. Like we released a That's few, awesome. uh, yeah, a few shorts for the for the game. And yeah, Overwatch uh, looks beautiful. Uh, uh, it's, uh, they're, they're, rendering, lighting, everything. Yeah, it looks looks really cool. I mean, great team there. The game, yeah, I, amazing. I could now. tell. Yeah. I don't know exactly what what was the uh, the Titan project about, but the idea that it was canned just to do Overwatch, I think. <laughs> It worked out pretty well. Yeah, can't say, say too much about this, but yeah, of course. I, I don't know. I don't know much about that either. I just, I just know from what I read over, you know, like yeah, some some stuff is is, is 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 online. Yeah, it's a it was a big project and uh, it's supposed it to be like a, another MMO, right? Yeah, big and very ambitious project. And right. It just wasn't really going where uh, people wanted to, to to go. You know, it was just just taking a while. It had amazing team great great artists and great people and but it wasn't really going right anywhere i think and they kind of decided to just get back to a kind of lean and mean team and do something very simple and focused and that's what um and that was kind of there's some dna of titan that's in yeah Overwatch. and um and they were very very focused on something very simple and very very uh focused and yeah it was i think they did a really good job like very smart very smart stuff they did with Overwatch, I think. Yeah, for sure, and it it just sort of jumped into the into in the right place at the right time, much mm -hmm. like World of Warcraft. You know, there's so many MMO games that came out afterwards that mm -hmm. just never made anywhere any any near of the success of what World of Warcraft made. You know, and that's just just I guess the you know how you guys how this game was created and, and just the right moment of time in the history of, of video games, you know, just made sense to mm. happen and it just grew to, you know, the huge scales, you know, for, for longest time was the biggest game out there. Yeah. Uh -huh. From like the, you know, quality games. I'm not talking about 
or fucking Titan Clash on your iPhone or whatever. <laughs> whatever bullshit <laughs> small games that you play on your iphone that's that's a different story but yeah it felt Probably some good stuff there I, ha I haven't really played much yeah yeah for sure I'm sure there's some good stuff too <laughs> but it's just like it, it you know looking at how many games try to reproduce the same thing is just such an ambitious thing to do and warcraft sort of grew so so fast and there's so much content out there mm -hmm. that if if you would ever want to create something subpar it would just never work out because like, hey, I'm already having this. It's it's short yeah. content and it's, it's what you're presenting true. here is not really anything new. Yeah, it's uh, definitely for this kind of game. Yeah, it's like a lot of a uh, lot of inertia there from, from yeah. the content and also not, I think, other things like the community too. You know, it's like you play a game, play with your friends, you have your guild, you have your, 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 your rituals, you know, you play every week, you do your raid or whatever and you have all that stuff and it's like suddenly trying to another game trying to pull you out of this game to go in in it it's like it's really tough to break that right because it's not just the game yeah. it's the whole experience and the whole like social aspect that that's yeah so i think when games are able to do that it works really well i think like probably league of legends is doing the same thing you know it's like they have a really there's other games that are trying to 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 do the same thing but it's like they have such a strong probably like established like all the, the, the mechanics of the game and stuff that you know by heart if you have to go to another game, you have to kind of learn all this stuff again. And it's like, why? why? You know, I have this game. And yeah. Have you fun. tried it, by the way? League of Legends? Yeah. Oh, uh, no. I haven't tried it. I haven't played it anymore. But I, <laughs> I uh, don't play games anymore either. The last game I played was The Last of Us. And I played it like five times in a row. Super biased, but it was worth it. That was um, awesome. I did try League of Legends, though. And I can yeah. tell it's it's fun, dude. It's, it's oh, so bet. polished. It's so well done. Um, you know, sure. like you, you have those sort of websites that offer you some service. Like you have, I, I, I'm going to give you an example. You have, an, uh, let's say you have a website that, that's offering like really good services, right? Mm. It's like a really fresh idea, works really well. And then time to time, you're going to have like this Easter egg or something really freaking funny hidden that just catches you by surprise. And you just like really appreciate the uh, artistry of, of, of fun that mm -hmm. you know this site that is giving you this really good service i'm just talking in a very generic terms mm -hmm. it, it, it's not taking itself seriously mm -hmm. uh enough so that it, it's still keeping it like very organic and alive and i feel like that that game has some of that in it you mm -hmm. know and it might be it might be because of the culture of the company uh the culture of the players and whatnot you know it's it's kind of interesting. It's 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 very much like Warcraft, one of one of a kind thing mm -hmm. that is out there. They just like I, I just read news that they just surpassed like hundred hundred million players. Yeah, that's last crazy. Month. It's fucking insane. <laughs> it's Big insane. Phenomenon. Yeah, yeah. Um, hey, I actually have one more question in terms of, or it's actually more of a conversation in terms of mm -hmm. art direction. Because I, as I said, I used to be art director as well. I, I was art director for about two years when oh, I was yeah. at Crytek. Oh yeah, that's right, yeah. Uh, yeah, we what were running, was that? it was a uh, project that was canceled. It was ca called, uh, I don't remember exactly what it was called. I think it was Redemption or something like that. Can't mm -hmm. remember. It was, It was. you know what, in retrospect, it was very similar in the style or, or visuals to what The Last of Us was, you know? And it was kind of fun because when I went for the interview for, the, for Naughty Dog and I showed them the work that I did there, I was like, you, you're perfect. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, awesome. But I had a, I had personally, I had a negative experience for a couple of reasons. I'm, I'm curious, you know, it's a little different um, at Blizzard Cinematics specifically, I would say, uh, from the way you guys are structured there. But one of the things that I, I think in retrospect that I didn't like, and maybe because I wasn't ready for it, maybe because mm -hmm. I was at the stage of time where I still wanted to explore uh, more of an artistry of things rather than yeah. uh, directionality of things, you know, like more of be being being a guy who creates rather than being a guy who directs mm -hmm. uh, was the fact that how much of meetings and discussions, like even politics and and like how mm -hmm. many things are attached to one another and you, you, you can't really just go there like, oh, I want to create like really cool looking shit, you know, that was like, yeah, 
that was like really hard thing to do actually. I see what you mean. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, um, for me, I think it's like I kind of got to the point where, like, I don't. I, if I really want to do something, I'll, like a picture or something, I'll do it at home or something, you know. So mm -hmm. I don't, I don't mind not painting as much as I used to during the day, you know. Like it's. I think yeah, for a while was, that I, was brutal for me. It's yeah, like, for, for, I'm I, not painting anymore. What yeah, for a long time, I think it would have been difficult. I would, I would not have liked it. But I think I got to a point where I'm like, eh, it's okay if I don't if I don't paint too much, you know, at, at work. I'm fine with it, you know. If I, right, I'll just draw at home in my sketchbook or something, or I'll I'll, I'll paint the paint painting, which I don't really do too much anymore. But, um, and um, yeah, that's fine. And I, and I still, again, like I think I still, I think it depends from company from to company and from different projects to projects too. Like, I think we have, I think our team is pretty well structured. Where I do still have time to even if I have a bunch of meetings and, and, and stuff, I still do have time to be creative too, which right. is great, which is, I think is really great. And that's because we have the, the team that supports it, you know, with the production and things like this. So um, so I think if it was different, if I if I didn't if I it could be it could be a situation. And and there is I mean there's been a very some pretty difficult time at some points where I was really wondering if I um, if I really wanted to do that, to do that or not, and uh, it might still in the future, I might also go back to like fuck it, I wanna <laughs> back to just designing and painting and just be chill, you know, put my headphones on and just paint the whole day and you know without any meetings and stuff. That that might still happen in the future, but for yeah, now, a couple of guys who did that are just like fuck, oh, yeah, I, I, I yeah. cannot, I cannot deal lot, anymore. Right? <laughs> yeah. yeah, people who try that for a while and then they go back to just painting and stuff. So that might still happen. You know, I've been doing that for about two years now, and I still like it for now. I think I think it's a really really fun project that we're working on, and um, yeah. so I'm, I'm learning a lot too about yeah, like teamwork, and also it's I think it's it's also it's something really interesting about the fact that you don't have as much time to paint too. Is that it really in a way it also forces you to be very efficient too in a way you do right. stuff. Like you really need to go to like the essential and stuff. It's like oh wow, I need to do this paint over or something. Uh, it's like, all right, all right, what's the, you know, what's the three th important things there that I need to do? Because I'm not going to have the whole day to do this paint over. You know, I have like one hour or something and that's it because then I have to do something else or whatever. So there is an interesting aspect too, even like process wise in, in this kind of more fragmented day that you get from uh, having to do more teamwork and uh, meetings and things like this. So there's always, yeah, I'm trying to see the positive, you know, <laughs> even in that aspect. Yeah, it's a little different, you know, um, you get to be, you know, when you're art director, you get to be, uh, you know, the head of a vision. You, 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 it's, it's not anymore, I'm just doing this beautiful painting where I'll try to influence everyone else to go that direction. It's more like I'm setting up a direction and now I'm delegating that work to someone else for someone else to paint, yeah. to get that colors right get the lighting right, you know, that kind of stuff. So it's it's a little different mindset to have. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure. And um, it's something that also I'm I'm learning too. Like I'm 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 like really happy too. Like the moments where I'm the most happy at work is when I see like just you know people in our team just coming up with really cool stuff, you know. Yeah. It's like it's like it's like very satisfying. You know, it's like it's a different set of rewards like, for yeah, sure. Yeah, exactly. It's like you, you see like, you know, some concept artists come up with like really cool ideas or something or like modelers, like making their own decisions on some stuff and coming up with something like, oh shit, I would have never thought about this. And this is awesome, you know, and it's like, it's really rewarding. Um, so yeah, it's different. It's, it's it is, yeah. I guess it just, you have to be ready for it. If you're, as an artist, yeah. you're ready for it, then you for should sure. do it. If you're, if you're not, you should probably never well, do it. Uh, I, actually, I don't know about this because I feel like it's one of those things where you kind of have to like, it's scary, right? When I started the job, I was like, holy shit, like, how am I going to do that? You know, and, and, and I was really thinking, like, I have no clue, you know, and you have to learn it by doing it, I think. So I feel like it's one of those things where, where I don't know, it's like, for me, I kind of had this feeling, you know, that's, I didn't really know where it's coming from, but I kind of always had that in my career, where mm -hmm. it's like, at some point when I was doing 3D for a while, suddenly I was like, okay, I want to do 2D and, and, and fuck it, I'm going to quit my job and I'm going <laughs> to, I'm going to try to be a concept artist, you know, and, and at this point, I kind of had the same thing, but at the same time, I was really scared because I had, this is a job, we have responsibility, you know, you have people that are expecting you to, you know, if you, if you mess up, you know, it's your fault, you know, it's like, <laughs> it's, it's like, and people know, and so, so it's, it's a lot of, 
it's pretty scary, but I feel like it's a job that you have to do to, you know, you, you can't really learn it in a book or something. I mean, maybe you can, I don't know, but you kind of have to just jump in and, and just like learn while doing it. And, and then it gets easier, but it's, because I don't know if you're, it's one of those things where I don't know if you're ever really ready for stuff like this. You know? Oh, no, it's, I'm not saying like you, you, you ever will be. It's just like, it's yeah. more of a, of a mindset you're in. Like, is, yeah. is your mind, is your head ready for, for a change like that? If you, if you feel like you want to change it because you're, you have that inner personal drive mm -hmm. that basically drives your life. You know, you've been through this before already, like, yeah. like you said. From 3D to concept yeah. art, you, you made that leap, and you know what it entailed, and you know it wasn't easy, and all that stuff. So, but you also know that the hard work yields the uh, the best uh, reward as well. You know, yeah. it's like it's, it's a better reward to have when you really have to grind through a lot of shit, yeah. and then you actually get that reward versus like when it comes really easy to you, then you don't really like the next one. You will maybe not appreciate so much anymore. Yeah. Um, I'm just saying, like, I think that the time when I was, um, jumping into art direction, cause I was asked to do that and I said, yes, fuck yeah. Cause I, f I felt like that was a, a natural progression. Mm -hmm. Um, I think I just wasn't, I wasn't ready. Like yeah. mentally, I mean, I guess I see what you mean, capacity yeah. wise in mm -hmm. terms of like what I could deliver in terms of the vision, I think I was ready, but from the idea of, you know, what this really entails, yeah. you know, I, I think I had just had to go through uh, the whole experience and actually fail to understand that I wasn't ready and not to understand like what this really is. And yeah. then maybe in the future when I get to do, you know, maybe I'll get to do that again. Yeah. I'll know what to prepare for and I will yeah, know sure. how to how to deal with that and if it's really for me or not, you know, everyone yeah. is different. So for sure, it's kind of interesting to to, to oh, know yeah, your that's, angle that's, on that's it. a good point yeah i mean like i actually kind of felt like i wanted to do that for a while but it took me a while to actually really like jump in and like all right now i'm gonna do it like mm -hmm. for a while i was like ah uh, yeah i don't know if i'm you know like you say ready or something like i was like um, i'll keep oh, i'll just work on the Warcraft <laughs> movie for for a couple of years and and then we'll see you know i was like so yeah it took it took a while for me to actually really jump in um but yeah it's it's it's, it's interesting. No, uh, what I would add is, you know, what I've noticed is that whenever someone has a really prolific mind, then um, it, it rarely, rarely ever uh, fails or, or goes in, the, in a direction that it, it just never progressed. Like, I don't think I know anyone who I really admire uh, in terms of the work and ability to create, like, amazing whether it's art or, or direction, whatever, mm -hmm. that never take a challenge or sits in the place where they feel most comfortable. Mm. You know, I know you don't post much, <laughs> but, you know, I've always admired, like, how much, you know, artistry you're adding to your work. It's just Thanks. like it, there's been always a constant progression in terms of what you do and how you do it. And when I heard, uh, I don't remember when I heard that, but I, when I heard, like, you jump from... I think you actually told me that when mm. you when you said like hey i'm actually art directing right now i was like oh yeah, yeah it actually fucking does make sense you know <laughs> uh, so yeah it's uh, there's something 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 about you know not being in this in the same spot all the time where you just kind of want to throw yourself in the into the deep waters and see if you can swim because that when you that's when you like really really find out what what are your vices and how you can progress yeah, to, to I agree. I mean, get I, somewhere I, yeah, else. I definitely, yeah, it's, it just, for me, it just gets boring, you know, you're like, yeah, I, like I need to, to try something new, you know, otherwise I just get kind of depressed, you know, <laughs> <laughs> I want to try something different, you know, like if you just do the same thing all the time, it's like, you, you just get burned out and something so, in it, isn't it? Right. Like you just like, yeah. I kind of reach the goal. But it's it's not really about reaching goals. It's really about the journey and unpredictability of it. Mm. No. Yeah. Yep. That's cool. So you, you all right? So you worked on the on Warcraft movie, right? Yeah. How was that? How was working with I? I in, did you work with Duncan directly, or was it uh, like through mm, the through the channels? No, we we were working with the production designer. Oh, okay. 
yeah, so it was so we're getting emails from him, and, and we had some a little bit of buffer, but we were from Blizzard, you know. Um, yeah, yeah, of course. But but we would get emails from from production designer, and we were just doing a bunch of pictures. I don't know how much I can talk about it, but yeah, it was fun. It was it was good well, time. You can, you was, can obviously say different. you did pictures for it. So. Yeah, yeah, it was it was uh, it was really cool actually. I had a really good time. And Jonathan was working on that too. We had a little group there and a little room with a bunch of people just working on the movie, and uh, it was cool because it was different. You know, it was like for us because um, I haven't worked. And that's the only movie I worked on, and um, like it's, it was a pretty different process from what we were used to do with the, with the cinematics in some ways. So it was just an interesting experience and seeing what the production designer was looking for, and um, and just doing a bunch of just a bunch of pictures that are like kind of similar to what we used to do because it's you know it's Warcraft, but also it's a little bit mm -hmm. different. You know, it's like it's a di slightly different vision and uh, different uh, ambitions and stuff. So it was it was it was fun. It was really fun. Two years, um, on it, kind of on and off. Well, I think total maybe if it was spread out on on two years, but maybe I worked like a year or something on it. Right. And um, yeah, it was cool. Did a bunch of uh, mostly environment concepts, um, and uh, some of them are, are in the art book actually. There's like this art book that came out for the, and there's there's a bunch of stuff I did in it. Should be able to post it, right? After actually, person. actually, I don't think so. Like, I think we we were told that we're not. <laughs> from the fuck. Movie. That's why I don't like to work in studios, dude. <laughs> right, freelance. Just like fuck it. I gotta post it. Fuck that shit. <laughs> yeah, but for me, it's always this kind of stuff too. It's like usually by the time I can post stuff, if I can, I don't like it anymore. <laughs> so yeah, I'm there's like, something kinda, about I'm it, right? I'm kind of embarrassed. I'm like, oh shit. It's I usually a couple years shit. old and. Like, ah, yeah. oh, it's just, uh, it was back yeah. in the days when I was a shitty person. <laughs> yeah, I can see the I old mistakes, you know, you only see what you would have done differently now, you know, so it's it's kind of like the curse of this job, you know, it's like, by the time you can show things, you don't want to show them anymore. <laughs> it, with films, it's not that bad as with yeah, games, I feel. Yeah, it doesn't seem like, yeah, it doesn't seem that bad, right? Because no. it's just maybe two years tops, and mm -hmm. then your work sees the light of the day. With yeah. some games, it might be f five or six yeah. years. It's yeah. insane. Yeah. In five years, dude, my my work five years ago, holy shit, such yeah, a shit. I, <laughs> it was still awesome. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, something about it, it, And, you know, um, sort of doing your own personal work is the really where, you, where you're going to show what you're really capable of mm. at the end of the day. So, yeah, I think by the time the project comes out, it's like unless it's it's still kind of fresh or you're really proud of it in a way. Yeah, uh, I mean, it happens, right? I mean, it's still pictures I've done in a while that I feel like, oh, yeah, this, those were pretty good, you know, compared yeah. to other things I've done. So, yeah, it still happens. There's there's one project I worked on, one one film that is still not in... I, I know it's going to be made, but mm -hmm. by the time it's made, the work is going to be so old, I don't know if I'm going to be still pr like yeah. happy of it. But mm -hmm. I still consider it the best work I've ever done ever. Oh yeah, damn, yeah. I want to see that. <laughs> and uh, I think I've I, I might have shown you some some of that stuff that I did for that project. If not, I'll 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 show it to you right after this conversation Ooh. if you want to. Haha, -ha, you guys cannot see it. <laughs> but I'm I get sued or something. <laughs> um, but but yeah, it's just like that stuff. Um, I think any. Any of the, like close friends that have seen it, mm. um, allegedly seen it, uh, well, were I, like. I think I've heard about about it. Th so everyone who allegedly seen the work that I have allegedly shared, mm -hmm. because it's under NDA allegedly, and mm -hmm. I allegedly worked on it, <laughs> uh, just to be just Jonathan to be safe and sound here. But I, yeah. Um. Have said that, yeah, dude. That's probably the best you've ever done. Cool. And it's kind of sad too, because it was a couple of years. Ago, it was like five years ago now. Oh, I'm wow. like, what the fuck? Crazy. Yeah, that's always the, the crazy thing, right? It's like when I sketch, for instance, in my sketchbook, and I always get so pissed when I look at an old sketchbook of mine and I see a drawing. I'm like, damn, that's like better than anything I'm doing right now. And that's <laughs> five years ago. Like, what, what happened? Am I getting worse or something? That spark, that that yeah. one thing that you had during that time where. Yeah, you were really inspired, and you just. Although my 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 way of seeing it is that usually, actually, what's happening is that if you look at, if you put you plot like quality over time, you know, of of your 
personal work or your, your any kind of your work, it's like this kind of like very noisy line, but it keeps going up. And uh, but the thing is, if you go back, since it's very noisy line that's going there, like you, there might be little peaks back in back in the days. You know, we had this like random freak peak where you did something really good. You know, like yeah. ten years ago or something. But if you look at the average of all the work you were doing at the time, it was actually not as good as you're doing now. So it's like slow. Yeah. Of course. Your average is going high, but there's still peaks back in the days that were really high. And you, so when you look at back at that, you're like, holy shit, it's like, wow, am I, am I getting worse? But I don't think that's the case. You know, it's no, just, no, it's just like going up, but it's the, the, the curve is noisy enough that, you know, there would be some still pretty good stuff you did. You know, I agree. Yeah. It's just I guess it's just uh, the synergy of things that created the one image. They're like, fuck, mm -hmm. fuck, it just worked out so well. Yeah. Yeah, that happens. Uh, Vitaly Hrlik uh, is funny because there's a there's a, um, there was a guy I'm gonna have here. I'm actually gonna gonna invite you, Vitaly, on that art cafe episode uh, sometime soon. Mm -hmm. There's a guy who has a first name same as Vitaly Bugarov. Mm -hmm. He's always it, this guy is always on on our streams here. It's like I always see him posting comments. Mm -hmm. And his last name is exactly the same name as Andrews. So okay. <laughs> it's kind of, kind of funny. Um, no, it wasn't The Last of Us movie. I've never worked in that. Um, I don't even know if it is in works or not. I, I had so disconnected from it. Can't really tell. Um, anyways, dude, let's jump into some questions. There was oh, quite sure. a bunch of them uh, from our amazing, amazing audience. So I got a few right cool. here. What is the advantage and disadvantage between drawing black and white first and st and stripe into yeah. color step? Into so I guess between. Question. Yeah. Well, for me, I really like these people who are really good at starting a sketch in black and white and then colorizing it. I personally really don't like it. Like I, I if I do that, I, and actually I do it, I would like do thumbnails in black and white, just, just think about composition and stuff. But then I usually would actually start the painting over from scratch. Like I don't like to, because anyways, like you're doing the work twice the way I see it. Because the mm -hmm. way I, I like to paint lighting, like it's, I can't, like when you're translating a black and white drawing into color, like you, you will, you're going to try to, in a way, map a certain value to a certain color or something, right? You're going to use like gradient maps and color balance or whatever. But for me, this seems a little bit strange because like in reality with lighting, you know, like every single uh, spot is going to get light from different di directions. So something yeah. that would be the same value in the, in, the, in, the, in the black and white drawing should in reality would be different hues. So uh, it's really for me, it's kind of my brain's, my brain doesn't, it's hard for me to, to get my brain around like taking a black and white thing. I want to, I really want to have all those different planes that, that are reflecting different colors or something. So it's, it's kind of counterproductive for me to try to um, transfer like black and white to color. But I do think that it's a, black and white is a great way to do thumbnails because you can really focus on something simple because really values is like the, one of the most, after design, you know, and composition values yeah. like it's important. So you can really just focus on that and not get like, because um, color can be really distracting when you're just really trying to design um, um, a composition or something. And uh, so it's a really good way to, for me, I like to do that to just quickly just do a thumbnail or something black and white so you can think about big shapes and, um, you know, composition and uh, focal points and stuff like this. And then when I'm happy, and usually I try to keep them pretty loose, I will just use that as a reference actually for a new painting that will start building up with, a, with the final lighting in mind. Well, I would, so something I like to do for instance, I like to paint light passes separately so I would paint everything, for, if it's an outdoor scene or something, I would paint everything as a um, skylight pass or something. Right, right. You know? And, and then, I would paint, then I would paint the sunlight and then I would paint the bounce light and stuff. And, I would all, and then this way I get like all that color variation that I, at least I try to get a nice color variation from, from, from different angles. Uh, whereas I, if I was translating right away the black and white there, I would have to kind of like repaint everything anyway. So... Yeah, thinking in the very 3D terms here. Yeah, I mean, I, yeah, exactly. I mean, I, sure. I, that's, that's, that's how I think, I, I, I don't want to brag or anything, but I think I, I got pretty, when I started doing digital 2D, from never really having painted before, like, I think the first thing I got 
uh, was really lighting. And I think uh, it was mostly because of my experience in 3D for some reason. Funny yeah. enough, I think actually, I think it's for people, if there's people around who, who are listening, who, who feel like they want to learn how to paint lighting well, I th actually think that 3D, like doing 3D is, is a great way to learn because uh, especially if you're using, I mean, actually, because yeah, I started with like scanline and stuff, like really basic renderers. Mm -hmm. But I think that there's, there's value in both like really simple renderers or, on, or, or you know, real-time GI stuff because you're going to start to think in passes and you're going to be, use, you're gonna be um, also used to see the same thing through in different light situations. Like let's say you're lighting a, a, a simple scene with, a, let's say, a sphere on, on a plane in the daylight. You, if you first put the, the, the skylight, you know, you're going to see that, how that looks like, you know, and then yeah, you're going to see the yeah. sun, you're going to see how that looks like, then you're going to see the bump, the, the bounce, and then you're going to put your materials. And it, so you start to think in a very analytical way, which even if, if you're not painting in that time, you, your brain is getting used to like seeing those things and like tr tweaking those things, like if you're tweaking the specular map, if you're tweaking the, the roughness of a, of, of a material, if you're tweaking the, the, all those things make you think about like this decomposed way instead of, I feel like if you don't have this, this way of, of seeing, if you're just looking at uh, a, a photo or something, it's so overwhelming. There's so many things, you know, and it's yeah. like, I think if you're just starting and you're looking at it, it's like, oh, I'm trying to understand what's happening. There's so many things happening at the same time. And it can be very overwhelming. But by doing 3D, you're actually working. It's almost like you're working in a simpler version of reality where, you know, you can, you can think about very simple things separately. You know, you think about now I'm thinking about primitives with like a very simple GI lighting, which is something you never see in the real world. But, but the rules that you get from, from, from this, from, from looking at that, you know, like are things that you can apply to much complex, to way complex things, you know, um, which, so I think it's a very good school actually to, 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 to do 3D in a kind of analytical way you, where you try to understand why things look the way they do, you know, it's like, you know, I want to put a material that looks like metal. How do I do that? You know, and you start to think about, you know, like reflection, uh, the, how blurry the reflection is, the Fresnel, how much, like, what's the next of refraction of the Fresnel and stuff. And those things that, are things that then you can apply to 2D because you can, you can think the same way, you know, when you're actually painting. I agree with you. I mean, I th isn't it that, uh, you know, even like as y when you're working as a matte painter, you actually start from the sky dome, right? You start from yeah. the HDRI and then you, you work your way, your yeah. way out of that. Yeah, I absolutely, I absolutely agree with you. It's there's something about, <clears throat> I think it's the how scientifically and simple the breakdown is of the lighting itself in the three D realm that actually makes it really digestible because you have almost like a blueprint. All right, directional light, ambient, ambient occlusion, uh -huh. GI, shadow passes, blah blah blah, and it, it's so broken down into simple steps that yeah. it's super easy to sort of like peek into them and, and understand them one by one. Yeah. And once you combine them together, now you have a realistic lighting. Yeah, exactly. Because that's the thing too, is that you, you, you get used to see what makes a picture realistic too, which is something yeah. that you don't really know. Like when you're just looking at reality or you're just drawing in a sketchbook, it's like understanding what are the rules that make a picture look realistic. Because actually, if you kind of understand, it's actually pretty simple. You know, it's like what you get, like you say, if you break it down a little bit, it's like, well, if you have a nice, you know, a soft edge where the terminator on, on the on the object is, and then you have the you know sharp, hard edge on on the on the on the the shadow, the cast shadow, and you have like some contrib I mean, com contribution in the shadows, and you have some bounce, and you know you get a little picture that looks pretty realistic in a way because the lighting is is, is broken down like this, and there are things that you get used to see, to, to seeing in three D, which. Um, anyways, I'm kind of ranting in the same <laughs> thing I was saying earlier, but yeah. Yeah, I, I agree though. Next For question. Sure. Yeah, let's jump to the next one. There is, there's, dude, there's so many. <laughs> I'll try to get through most of them. Maybe we could keep the answer shorter, so we don't have I mean, to spend like another rush. hour. <laughs> I'm, I'm not in a rush personally. I don't know how long. Okay, cool. Going. Yeah, we can, we can keep going. So don't That's worry fine. if you're I'm not in a rush at all. Well, let me get to the next one. How do you, um, how to do a efficient researching on a subject I don't know at all, to grab sufficient information as later used to come up with a more grounded design. Um, okay, that's, 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 all right, all right. That's more that's of a, a design one. question. Yeah, it's um, a design, deeper, deeper design question. Well, I mean, I don't know, like, I'm not too much of a designer, you know, I'm more of a kind of lighting composition guy, you know. I, I love to design, but it's not something that actually I haven't done it too much. Like I'm, I'm trying in some of my personal work, but like, 
I'm, I'm not like these people who are just amazing designers. You know, that's all I do. They, they, they come up with all these fucking interesting shapes, fresh things that you never thought about, you know, and they, 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 you know, so you so can see. Mean. Yeah, there's really people who are just really amazing designers, you know, yeah. and, and, um, and, and that's really their, their focus. And you can see that there are people who are, have a lot of curiosity, you know, in like just design language, you know, like just probably tons of, you know, watching documentaries about architects and um, reading books about, you know, principles of graphic design. And all, you can see those people are really interested in, in, in shape language and, and just, um, culture and if you're doing character design you know things like this and and i'm personally I, I really like design but it's not something that i've been pursuing too much but which is something i'm trying to pursue more now mm -hmm. but so i don't feel super um like qualified to to give answers on this but i would say in one way for me for instance i've been really into like space recently you can see a lot of my personal work in the last three years yep. something like, <laughs> so, like stuff i was showing like this totally, whatever totally and, and, and uh I think for me, that's really, in a way, it's the key, I think, if you want to design things or whatever, is to be really interested in, in a specific topic, you know, or yeah. multiple ones if you want. And, and I think it's just this curiosity and interest that you're going to get from just trying to go deep. But that's something that, that's unique to anyone, everyone. You can't just say, hey, you now just, you need to be interested in, in like uh, medieval armors or something. You know, if you don't care about it, you don't care about it. And, and it's just, that's just how it is, you know. And... And I feel like if if you find like what's something that really makes you just excited as a topic in general, just dig deep into that. You know, that's your thing, and, and just like read more about it. You know, watch st movies about it. What read books, uh, um, do studies about it. You know, like I've been really digging deep into that space stuff recently because uh, it's just for me, it's just really fun and interesting. And the more I learn about it, the more I get, the, the more I get fascinated. So you kind of need to get into that kind of positive feedback loop where you, the more yeah. you learn about it, the more interested you are and the more you want to like, Oh shit, I want to know more about this, the, how those rockets work. I want to know more about what probes are, you know, in the solar system right now. And then you, you just keep going down the rabbit hole and, and it's really something that you need to kind of light this fire on a specific topic. You know, some people have it from, very early some people it comes later like for me the space stuff for instance i was really um it's always something that i was kind of interested in but it's strangely enough like it's really only very new like like it's really when i started posting like i think was um like like those pictures like this one for instance i was really in the beginning like i was just thinking something like oh i want to do a project about space stuff yeah and 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 this really like kind of snowballed into like just getting super interested in the topic and learning more and you know that stuff well, you have, I have friends who are really into space. They've been into space since they were little kids. You know, they were building like models and stuff like of the space shuttle when they were five or like they were really into that shit from the very beginning and they're still super excited about it. And for me, it came late, you know, and, and now I'm like super excited about this and most of my personal work revolves around this and I think I'm learning a lot about it and, and it's really fun. So I feel like you kind of need to be honest about what you really like and um, and just kind of like dig deep into that and, and hopefully you, you you'll just keep, you, you, you're going to get excited about learning about this thing and you're going to want, you're going to be researching that thing. You're going to see a Wikipedia article about, you know, like Russian engines or something and, and a rocket engine. And you're going to just, just keep reading more about it, start to see some cool pictures and then maybe do a study, you know, I'll do like, Oh shit, this engine looks really cool. I'll do a little study in my sketchbook and, it, you know, integrate that into a painting later. And, and this is something that people are going to catch up. They're going to say, Oh shit, this detail is really cool. Like, and that's going to come from, from your curiosity that you're going to put into your picture, you know? Yeah. So I feel like this is something like if you're, if you want to learn things to, to design wise, you know, you kind of want to, you want to be excited about it. You know, you don't want to just like, just do it because it's like, well, I need to do that, you know, uh, but you, you kind of need to be excited about it. So I think it's like trying to, you know, spark that fire, you know? Yeah. You need to be driven by yeah. that idea. Uh, and once you are, then you, it's it's just gonna be more than oh this is a cool reference let's use let's use that it's like, yeah hmm what exactly is making this work that way yeah. let's say if you want to work um, you're working on a project that has a med medieval armors in it mm -hmm. you know what, what's gonna make it really unique and and really great for you uh, as a designer and and can you, you can possibly really impress mm -hmm. um, director or someone is when you're actually the dig really deep into it mm -hmm. because you'll find out some nuances about the way yeah. armors are designed that otherwise you would just miss, you know? 
Yeah, and also the, I think that having a genuine interest in stuff is going to also help you do things that are a bit different. You know, I feel yeah. like otherwise it's easy to just kind of self-reference the pop culture, you know, and then things. Yeah, things exactly. Same, you know? But if you have really interest, in, like let's say I don't know, you have to like design a female, a uh, female, female armor. <laughs> oh yeah, for instance, or anything, you know, if you have to design a creature or something, you, you could do the easiest thing and just go on ArtStation or something and look for creative designers, which are you know amazing and stuff. But and then look that for reference, or you could it's all like the start, same though. Like, or you I, start, I have a feeling it, it looks all the same. Yeah, but because I think what you should do, although you know, it's more like just go either like you know start reading some I don't know medical books or something and look at some weird weird diseases or something or like um read about some weird insects or whatever and try to yeah. like push into to get some to start to get something that's different you know suddenly you'll, you'll see a shape or a, 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 something that's like really real but that you can take interesting shapes from that are not something that everybody's just copying right now you know um yeah that makes sense speaking of creatures like everything out there right now is just like it's a mismatch of everything that we've seen so far i think mm -hmm. the only the only movie and the creature design that really sticks out for me over the last decade is pan's labyrinth you know oh uh, yeah i was gonna say adult uh, did you go to do the delta exhibition in la no i, I plan to no, you should, man. i, I want to see oh, it super. it's still for like for another month right yeah i think it's until the end of november Oh, yeah, actually, perfect. Yeah, I think two months, maybe. Yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I still, I have it planned. I, I want to see it for sure. Yeah, it's really cool. Yeah. yeah, like the you know that guy with uh with eyes in his hands, mm -hmm. like yeah. that that kind of stuff is so original. It was yeah. it's so fresh, you know. Yeah, and, and and actually going back to what I was saying, I think it's it's really interesting because you see like the thing they have like the exhibition in LA they have is a uh, it's basically they're exhibiting stuff that del toro the director has in this house like he has right. this house i think it's a separate house where it's just Don't filled with like me. with like cool <laughs> shit like filled with cool shit that when 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 the, he works on a new movie he invites like the designers there and they just work in his house and they have they're all all around them is just awesome artifacts and paintings from like super obscure shit and yeah. that must be so inspiring and and, and that really hell yeah trend, and you can it translate into the design that you see in the movie because these people are inspired by things that are like real and it's like this old 17th century book about like whatever and things that you, you don't even see on the internet, you know? So they come up with like all these inspirations that are um, very unique and that you haven't seen in any movie in the last 10 years, you know? So, and then the movie becomes really iconic visually because they have this design in there that are not just a copy of a copy of a copy of a copy yeah. of, a, of a design that you've seen 50 times, you know? So I think that's like really, you know, inspiring when you go there. It's like, holy shit, that must be so fun to actually work on this, on his projects because just being in that environment of all those cool curated, um, just weird paintings and sculptures. And like, he's got all those like horror movie, like fifties sculptures from like prosthetics or whatever from, from old movies. And it's like all those really interesting little things that you could, all of them, you could just spend hours just looking at them. So any one of those things, you could probably just get all kinds of inspirations for 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 a new assignment or something on 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 the on the job. So, um, so it's not a surprise that like the designs, like the the Panis Labyrinth characters and stuff, are so unique and cool. Because because when you know how those artists like get to work, you know, it's, I think it's, it's it sounds really really fun. Yeah, it's not like give me twenty sketches for tomorrow. I mean, who knows? Maybe that's how it works. I I don't know how that how, who designed. <laughs> yeah, who maybe knows? How, I mean, some. I don't know anyone who worked on that or. Yeah. Maybe I know, but I, I I'm not aware. Yeah. Um, all right, let's get on another one. Is it a, is it a, is it is it impossible to use traditional way to draw concept art in games and movie industry? Mm. Well, that's a good one. Um, it's possible. Yeah, it's I don't, possible. Yeah, I think not it's practical. Just, especially, yeah, that's the thing. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, if you're really good and not too slow, I mean, some you're people. You're Edna like, or yeah, there's you, only like. You can Two do or three you names. Want, right? I can tell. You can do anything. You can use any medium you want if you're really good yeah. and, and whatever. But for sure, this this is just like for actually at, at work personally, I do use a sketchbook a lot. But it's mostly for kind of just throwing ideas. You know, I'll just yeah. do it. for me. I like to use as as much mediums as possible. Like any anything for the for the for the job. You know, like I there's things I know 3D is better at. Some things digital 2D is better at, some things photo bashing is better at, some things 
traditional is better at. And, yeah. and I think that all those things vary from, from artist to artist. And for me, the traditional part that, that I like is just kind of like just coming up with like just just I think for me, it's in a way, it's easier to do that, it, even with a Cintiq or whatever. I, I, it's easier for me to just come up with a quick idea or like a quick thumbnail or something. I like to do that in my, in my, in my sketchbook, just like thinking while drawing. I like to do that in, in a traditional. It just comes up um, easier for me. And then when, I'm, when I found something I like, I'll usually like just replicate that digitally or in 3D or whatever. Um, but like as far as like doing the full process traditionally, I think probably where it's the easiest I mean, of all, like, I think it's for really for design, you know, if you have to design and probably for things that are not too uh, reliant on real world stuff, because in that way, like if you like designing soldiers for Call of Duty or something, I feel like photo bashing is probably the fastest thing, you know, but if you're designing, I don't know, like uh, cartoon characters or something traditionally, I think you can totally do that, you know, because yeah. you, you'll use your really nice, cool lines and and just the simplification you know because all that stuff it's it's it's, it's in, the, in the brain anyway so you don't need much complicated stuff because that's the problem is that with the traditional stuff is that especially in our job you'll have a lot of revisions and things like this and yeah. and and, I, and i've seen that, that happen in the past with some artists at work and stuff where they're really amazing and they're doing something traditionally but then if they do have to Suddenly, the director comes in and it's like, oh, yeah, this tower here is too too big. Can you make it 20% smaller or something? It's like, it's a big Bigger. deal. Fuck. It, it's a big deal in traditional, you know? Whereas whereas in, in, in digitally, that's like super easy. Like two seconds, you're, you're, you, you did it. You know, you just select, control T, you're done, you know? Yeah. Whereas traditionally, suddenly, this is, this is a big deal. It's going to take you like hours to do, you know? So yeah, just, you... just a simple fact of the tools and, 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 and of the environment of of being in a production, you know, it's like, it's, it's hard to argue for the, for, for really the usefulness of traditional. Whereas, I mean, I mean, but if you're really good, whatever, you know, it's like, if, if that's yeah, of course. medium and, but I feel like today, if you're just thinking about like, okay, what's the most efficient way to, to be a concept artist, I feel like, I mean, traditional is, is a great skill to have in general, but I feel like you definitely need to be able to, to use digital to, to, to have this flexibility that you're going to have in a production environment where you're going to need to do revisions and uh, fast iterations and all this stuff, you know? Yeah, if you can be as good as Carla Ortiz, then go for it. Otherwise... I mean, even Carla, nope. a lot of, you know, I'm sure Carla's all her work for Marvel and stuff is probably all digital, I'm, I would imagine. Yeah, so. pretty sure. Cool. Um, let me see. There's a few more. Um... Uh, we've heard many ways to approach learning 2D art, but what advice do you have for newcomers to 3D? That's a good one. To learn 3D? Yeah, like an advice. Th what would be the best advice in your uh, in in your mind to learn for 3D? someone who learn wants to learn 3D? 3D. Oh. Well, okay. So the thing is, I'm really an old fart in terms of 3D. <laughs> like, like I'm really like old school. Like I don't use ZBrush. Like, like. I like, don't use ZBrush either. I basically stopped doing 3D like professionally uh, as a modeler and like a production artist once uh, once ZBrush came out. Basically, so for me, I'm still like a old school 3ds Max poly modeling, fucking cut planes and and like super like old like I my techniques are like 10 year old or more, you know, like, actually more than like 15 year old. So so I'm really it's hard for me to give advice on that because. I'm like I'm, and I'm, I'm not using 3D as a production artist either. The only way I'm using 3D professionally these days is like super block block out Boolean, like messiest way possible, just because I want something to paint on. So, yeah. Um, so yeah, I don't really know too much about this. Like I would say probably you would probably want to use learn. I think like something like ZBrush or whatever is probably extremely useful today. I see what. I mean, if I think if I started learning today, I would use ZBrush probably because it seems so intuitive. I mean, there's a lot of things that are not intuitive about ZBrush, but like still the way you can you can model really complex stuff very easily without having to to deal with polygon like edge loops and 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 all the technical aspect of just building po polygon modeling and stuff that you will have in like Maya or Max and stuff. Yeah. If you're just if you're just worried about doing some cool characters or creatures or 
our stuff. I would probably just learn ZBrush today. I feel like that's that makes sense to me. Um, if you want to do more hard surface stuff, you probably want to do a combination of. Maybe, the thing is, you can even do a really good hard surface in ZBrush. So, uh, I yeah, mean, I for say, sure. the thing is with the CAD stuff. Like, I feel like CAD is really cool, you know, but I feel like how, for how long is, is it, will it really be useful the way it is today? Because I feel like CAD, what CAD brings you is a, is mostly a fillets, you know? It's like, okay, you get really nice. Like uh, There's more more to that. You, but if you get way, really deep, deep into it, there's yeah, so but, much like, surface stuff you can do. When, is it too much that you can't do? Like, the, the only reason why it's, it's a pain in the ass in the old, like in, in Max or whatever, to do stuff that you that you can do in, 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 in CAD is that... Yeah. You're, you're, you're just going to get into all these really messy it's like, you know, surfaces and you, you, to get those really clean surfaces, like all those curves that are intersecting with fillets everywhere and stuff. Like it's just the, the software is not really made for this. So, so yeah, yeah, of course. You're, gonna get this, you're just going to get dirty meshes. But, you, um, but Fausto, does Fausto even use CAD at all? I don't think so. I think he does all. Vitaly all, does though. Yeah, a yeah. Lot. For sure. Yeah. I, do, I do as well. A lot, but, of, a lot of work that I did for Ghost in the Show was in CAD. Yeah. But I feel like I, I'm not sure. I feel like if 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 like the regular packages that like give you some of the tools that that is in CAD in terms of especially getting all those clean fillets and stuff, mm -hmm. and like it's it might become as for for designers unless you're really an industrial designer uh, or product designer or car designer or whatever. But if you're just a concept artist, I feel like it's probably easy. If if suddenly like the people who are working on 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 Maya or whatever or Moto or something feel like okay we need to bring what concept artists like about about CAD into into our pipeline I think it would be probably pretty easy to get that in there I have a feeling you know because um, so I'm not even sure I think at this time it's probably cool to learn you know like Moi or, or Fusion or something but um, I don't know for how long that's going to be the case you know I feel like it's probably going to the other softwares are probably going to take these functionalities in it. Yeah, you never know. I mean, yeah. it, industry software is changing so much, so rapidly. It's like yeah. you might think the cat is the way. It might be something totally new that we don't even heard about yet. You know? Yeah. Because also the cat cat stuff gives you a very specific aesthetic, uh, aesthetic. You know, that's like it's very trendy right now, the cat aesthetic. But for how long? You know, for all we know, like the next thing, it's all gonna be parametric stuff. You know, and 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 I mean, I guess you can do that in some cat software too. But like maybe the whole like just you know, um, you know, weight reduction shapes that, you know, in, in, in robotic stuff that looks like modern robotics and stuff, maybe in, in, in four years or something, nobody's going to care about this aesthetic anymore, you know, so <laughs> it's a very specific aesthetic, you know. One thing about CAD is um, if um, it takes, it, it's super, like, let's say with Fusion, right? With Fusion, it's super easy to get into the basics. Mm -hmm. which, will, which will actually get you that aesthetics you're talking about, which is mostly just Booleans. Mm -hmm. um, but there's a lot of surface stuff you can do, like really crazy surfaces that would be extremely difficult to do uh, otherwise. Mm -hmm. It just takes a lot of time to yeah. understand tools. and Because it's, it's a different workflow. It's a different mindset you have to have in your head in order to, to create yeah. that stuff. I know... Um, sure. Like good good friend of mine, Paul Osimo. He's like an industry veteran. He's been you know illustrating for films since like I don't know. I think I wasn't even born when he started. Um, he's using Rhino, which which is basically very similar in a way. Yeah. Uh, as Fusion stuff. 360 works, right? It's it's surface based uh, parametrics and whatnot. Mm -hmm. I've seen the stuff he's building there. It's freaking insane, dude. It's oh, like yeah. he's just is it's a it's a totally different process though. It's not like you're modeling, you know, building polygons and then that's how you create your model. It's like you're almost like drawing lines to create surfaces and you're almost like calculating in your head that if my shape of a line is going to be like this and that, then the curve and the surface that's going to be created in between those going to turn to be this instead of that. So it's like it's a it's a compl it's a very similar to NURBS actually. Uh, mm -hmm. You're right. It's a very different mindset. Yeah, it, it, I guess it just takes time and effort, a lot of like a, a lot of time and effort. And once you surpass that sort of like this roadblock that is right ahead of you, mm -hmm. and you really sort of like find uh, find a way to to pass that, that's when you're gonna start really excelling. And I think it's just a matter of. Um, Combining all those tools and really using using them together to create some, something new. Oh, it's not sure. like you're gonna learn one thing and that that's gonna be the one thing only. It yeah. might you might learn something and then you find 
shit, the one thing I've learned from this tool, even though I cannot apply it to my work, but the mindset of, of, of working that way can completely change the way I approach working yeah. with the other tool, you know? And that, that yeah. already gives you like an edge of being more creative and, and, yeah, uh, and a little different than anyone else. So I fully agree. Yeah. yeah. Again, I mean, it goes back also to, I think it's ideally you should like, you should have all this set of tools, you know, in the toolbox and you just use the one you need for each specific job that you're, that you're, that you're thinking. It's like, Oh, I need to do this, this one thing. This cat is going to be better for this. I'm, I'm doing yeah. this 2D is going to be better or whatever. So for sure, I can only encourage people to just try as much different things as they can, you know, but, um, I do feel like if, if you need like if you don't want to spend too much money or something, I do feel like something probably like ZBrush though is like probably like best yeah, all it's the most round tool, you know. But you can you can the do only thing that the only thing about fucking ZBrush is when you open it and you see that UI and then <laughs> fucking <laughs> <There you go. laughs> punching you in the well, face. I, I wonder how it is for people who because I feel like the UI stuff with ZBrush. It's mostly counterintuitive for us because we've never we we used to other stuff. We used to like Maya and Max and Moto, whatever, or things that are a little bit more like traditional 3D. And then ZBrush is like totally different. But if you never learn any of the software, it's probably not as you know. It's probably not weirder than anything else. You know, it's like it's its own thing. Yeah. You know, it's just so different from what you expect from a 3D software when you already know 3D software. You know. You know, I think I have a perfect meme for this. Like. Uh, when, when ZBrush decided to go 3D, and then they looked at the UI that they created, mm -hmm. and then they, you know, then um, whoever whoever was the the guy or, or person, uh, you know, in charge of UI or, or in decision making, let's keep it that way instead of making it what artists understand. That's mm -hmm. exactly what what should be the com commentary to this. It was at this moment that he knew he fucked up. Hmm. Yeah, so so a little bit of Morgan Freeman there. <laughs> right. No, it's 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 a awesome software with shitty UI. That's what, that's how I gonna sum it up. Well, well, once you once you pass it, you know, I guess as you said, like if you if you've never been exposed to any other yeah. software, it, it might make a lot of sense. But from from uh, people that I know, been really deep into ZBrush, they say like all almost all of them say that there's so much redundant shit that yeah. nobody's using that. Yeah, yeah. It's like with uh, 3ds Max. Yeah, There's so Max, much like, shit there. Yeah, I use like I don't know, like five percent. Oh yeah, or one or whatever <laughs> percent of the software. You know, it's like there's so much stuff. Yeah, it's, it's just some, redundancy. Some, there's yeah. there's menus stuff that repeat like, uh, one another. So have you used, have you used 3D code and stuff like this? Because I haven't used that, and it seems like to be really no. Powerful. But Jama made a yeah. Jama made a class uh, yeah. for our school. Learn school. I wonder. Actually, that might be because I I'm so out of the loop, but I feel like that's from you should what take I've seen, it. It seems like that stuff is probably it's fucking also, epic, dude. It's probably even better than ZBrush, maybe for that kind of for a concept artist, you know, or something. Yeah, his his class is fucking epic, by the way. Yeah. It's just like you you're just like scratching your head, like what the fuck is going on on the screen? Yeah, he's yeah, yeah. It's pretty good. No, I, I from what I've seen, uh, 3D code is way easier to get into, mm. and it's uh, as powerful, if if not even more, in certain degrees, especially for concept art, you know, for like environment stuff. Cool. Yeah, for sure. Um, I have one. I, there's way more questions there. I'm gonna ask one more, which is more on the lighter, lighter side. What's your favorite movies, uh, TV shows, and why? Hmm. Okay, that's a good one. A little, a little um, curveball here. <laughs> yeah. Uh, actually, it's funny because I don't watch too many movies recently. I mostly. Um, so to go back, I think I really love movie-wise. I would say. Um, I don't think I have a specific movie that I really like, but I have directors and stuff that I really like. Like I love Kurosawa, um, like uh, like Red Beard and uh, Hidden Fortress and Seven mm -hmm. Samurai and stuff, or even his uh, gangster movies. Um, I love Kubrick. I love Two Thousand One. Two Thousand One is probably one, oh, one of my Two Thousand One is probably up there with my my favorite movies. Yep. Um, I love Alien. I think the first Alien for me. Uh, is definitely one of my masterpiece one of my favorites. Yeah, it's just especially as an artist in in the industry, I feel this movie has. And it, I, I don't know if you've seen it. In, it's in a perfect HD. movie. It's so good, man. And there's so much iconic things in this. Stuff. Like the, the the lighting is so good, the designs are so good, the story is really cool, the vibe is amazing. Like there's so much good choices made in terms of like how much they're showing yeah. the pieces and all. So this 
there's so much in this movie and and uh, I think i've watched the making of more times than the movie yeah. itself <laughs> yeah it's, it's so good i think yeah alien is definitely one of my favorites uh i love uh coen brothers movies uh, i love fargo i think fargo's oh awesome. fargo I'm holy a, shit that's such a I, good movie I love Fargo. It's so awesome. It's so, it's so I love all, funny. I love this just clusterfuck, you know. It's like yep. it's, the whole movie is just a big clusterfuck. You know, everybody's like this shitty guy, you know, that's like just trying. I don't know. It's amazing. Yeah, uh, it's a great movie. It's a classic. Yeah. Much like yeah. uh, Kubrick's Shining and yeah, yeah. all of those yeah. uh, Apocalypse um, Now. I love, um, yeah, I love Paul Thomas Anderson too. Um, Magnolia mm -hmm. and uh, Boogie Nights and uh, stuff like this. Um, Dude, you're just throwing classics here. I guess yeah. there's nothing, uh, uh, right, rightfully so. There's nothing really that inspiring that came out recently. Can you well, even tell like one movie that we're like, fuck it, this was really good. Recently? I cannot tell. I cannot say like, I, I, even well, just one. Yeah, no. This. I mean, I, I really like Villeneuve. For instance, I'm really excited for Arrival and his Blade mm -hmm. Runner. I think it's probably gonna be pretty cool. Like, I really like Sicario. I like, I like his movies are really good. Yeah, um, Sicario was great actually. I like uh, I agree the, that. in Yari too also and um, um, uh, Cuaron also. I really like. I love Children of Men, for instance. I think yeah, Children that's the one I would. That, that's probably the only one I would mention on the list here that was really good and really. Yeah, I think it's my out. probably my favorite. I mean, it's, it's like near future sci-fi, but it's like probably my favorite sci-fi movie in the in the in since like 2000. You know, I don't think this. I mean, I really like Moon also. Moon was really cool. Um, yeah, that's true. Moon was Moon, Moon was really good, and it was yeah. like one of those those low budget movies yeah. that felt really done the right way. Um, and uh, yeah, so yeah, movie was I think that's kind of my thing. I haven't really like watched too many recent movies, so um, it's hard to tell for more recent stuff. As far as series TV shows go, I think my favorite all time favorite show is probably The Wire. Um, oh yeah for sure i, I love the wire I the think wire is absolutely uh, the best yeah, yeah tv that's, series I, that's probably my favorite I, I just love how like just how real it feels you know and and, yeah. and it's, it's just never it's, over the top yeah ever. it's so it's so smart <laughs> it's yep. like and it's just so interesting you know it's like you feel like they're all real people in the in the stuff it's, it doesn't feel like they're just following a plot you know like i feel like a lot of series are really good but you can see they're chasing a plot you know we yeah. here. Like, it's like it really feels like everything is emerging. You know, it's like you feel like you're really in the story, and everything is kind of, you know, coming together in real time in front of you. And all those characters are really interacting, from not because they're supposed to make a plot advance, but because they're just being themselves. You know, and and all the characters interacting, and all this complex society interacting with each other is just yeah. making it's so good. Second That's season. <sighs> yeah. 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 <sighs> Yeah, yeah it's so good. I think the only uh, TV show that really comes close to it, like very close, would be Breaking Bad. But yeah, then I, yeah. after that, like a long, long nothingness. Yeah, I really like Breaking Bad too for, for me, yeah. though. I, w I wouldn't put it in the same category as The Wire. It's a different <laughs> it's league, yeah. yeah. It's very different. Well, it's a, it's a different type of show, like in a yeah. way. Like, I feel yeah. like, like Breaking Bad is like, it's a masterpiece of like just keeping you interested you know it's like yeah. it's like it's really like they're, they're pushing the right buttons you know you can see the it's, good, exactly it's a good what, arc for a character uh, development yeah. too yeah yeah but it's, it's still different yeah for sure yeah and, and it's, it's it's fantasy you know it's like it's it's not you know you can see the characters are kind of over the top and stuff and yeah. um, but it's, it's so masterfully crafted you know it's like you can see everything is just perfectly made you know and I agree with you. Uh, but, but, it, but it's really a story, you know. You can see that doing all they're doing there is just pushing your buttons to keep you interested, you know. Yeah. But I it's feel like the wire, a story. the wire is something very different. It's almost the wire is almost like a documentary or something. <laughs> yeah. It's much more dry, but it's also for me, it's way more deep, you know. It's way deeper. But it's those like characters so there are, are they're just so genuine. Like you cannot pinpoint a single character and say, "Well, that's acted," you know. Yeah, it's it's it feels so real in yeah. terms of like how well it's done, how well it's written, and yeah, and, and you know it's like it's the people who made it were people from Baltimore, you know, it's like yeah. the one of them was a cop, the other ex cop, and the other is an ex journalist, you know, and yeah, it makes sense, you know, it's like people who they really know their subject, and a lot of the, the actors too in the Wire are people they just took from the street, you know, who are not actual actors, and and you can feel like how genuine they are because yeah. they're just being themselves almost. <laughs> So it's yeah, it's it's really great. But I mean, this this I mean, there's a lot of great shows. Though I feel like that's actually one of the reasons why I haven't been watching as much movies, 
in the last 10 years probably is just because of how much amazing shows there have been around. You know, I think mm-hmm. like the quality of like with HBO and all that stuff is they've just been pushing like, again, I mean, and then other channels and other um, networks have been like following, but there's just really a lot of really good stuff. Um, yeah, there is quality stuff out there. Yeah, these yeah. Days. It's, really it's just like, it's, it's not even close. For me, it's like those two shows we mentioned and then there's a long, long, long road. Yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of stuff I haven't seen, up. though. Like, I, I, I mean, I, I, there's so many things around that it's probably some really, really good stuff that I have yeah, no, yeah, for sure. no idea. Of. But yeah, for me, for sure. I mean, I really like Six Feet Under also. Six Feet Under, I think, is, is really amazing. Um, it's probably one of my favorite shows, too. Um, I love Curb Your Enthusiasm. <laughs> I don't know yeah, if you like that. One. Super funny. I, l- I love that humor. Like I love Seinfeld. Uh, I love I love this humor. I love Larry David. It's just it's for me. Yep. I love stuff that makes me really like um, uncomfortable. Like I, <laughs> I like uh, Ricky Gervais shows too. Like uh, the UK Office. And oh yeah. Stuff, the, stuff. The, stuff that makes the you, cringiest like, of the cringe. Yeah, but <laughs> but I love that <laughs> for some reason. That's why I like Fargo and stuff like this too. It's like yeah. I, I, I really like this kind of self-deprecating humor. You know, it's like. Yep just showing all the, <laughs> the really shitty stuff about people but in a funny way <laughs> yeah for sure yeah. hey let me ask actually very last question it's, it's sort of like uh, and we can wrap it up right right after sure. that uh and i think it was a repeating question there uh, uh, it's along the lines of for someone that is interested in applying for blizzard as a content mm. artist mm. what are the most important things that i should consider to put in, in my portfolio I know it's a question that's usually like very often asks, uh, yeah. asked like, what should I do if I want to work for Blizzard? Or what should I do if I want to work for Riot Games? Mm. Um, I mean, the way I see it, if, if I see, like I see, you know, portfolios being, being, being sent to us uh, pretty often. And so we're, we're sometimes we're hiring and stuff. And um, for me, like, It depends on the on the role too, but if you right. if you want to be a concept artist, uh, let me try to put that into words. Like, you better be I, awesome. I, yeah, <laughs> well, that's that's number one. <laughs> but um, I think it's really I want to see designers. You know, I want to see people who are like artists who are really interested in 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 coming up with interesting shapes and interesting ideas you know that are it's not just about making a pretty picture i mean it's it's it's, it's nice to make a pretty picture but in a yeah. way it's interesting it's just it's just kind of like the, the the curse of the time you know it's like we're, we're we're just bombarded with pretty pictures all the time today you know and and to stand out it's it's i want to see things that are just really interesting visually you know like like it kind of goes back to like what we were saying you know about the passion and stuff like i want to see things that makes me feel like this guy or this or this or this, or this girl like really has this this passion for 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 you know designing and, and, and inventing uh interesting things people who are gonna go all the way to like get really inter- do, do research to come up with with cool ideas that i haven't thought of before you know and not yeah. just making another orc with you know i know that's what we do a lot you know we do, we do a lot of like pretty iconic simple things too then we have the orcs with the big shoulder plates <laughs> big badass characters and stuff but uh we do oversized you know, i personally shoulder plates. I, you know if you, you bring something in there you know that's like something yeah. unexpected you know and, and and something interesting uh so getting like that the, this 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 interest for design you know and and not just trying to make a pretty picture um that's like just like you know nicely rendered or nice colors or um whatever you know it's like just really um yeah, it's like it's that's mostly it's interesting, but it's, that's mostly the thing that that's separating from me when I see is like I see a lot of a lot of portfolios and and often it's like you can see that the, the actual interest in design is actually not that not that great, you know. It's like a lot of people just just try to do a, a nice pretty picture, which is cool, you know. But but like really getting into the new degree of of of, uh, of designing is is that's what's gonna catch my eye, you know. Personally. Right. Um, comes with time and experience too uh, it's yeah. just, uh, i think i've said it a couple of times already it's very easy to become an illustrator you just have to learn the, the tool uh it's much more difficult to become a designer because you have to learn a lot about the world from your own experiences yeah 
and you have to be almost obsessed about a lot of things and and get really deep into those things otherwise it's just like yeah you're gonna have a little bit of knowledge here a little bit of knowledge there but it's never gonna be something that stands out that's as you said like if you're obsessed about space then uh, like you are for instance right then you go really into the rabbit hole of, of understanding how things work and that's what actually going to be uh, making a, a better designer because you now understand functionality now understand yeah. how things work and yeah and, and you can i think a good example for that is like with you know aaron beck right it's yeah. like the guy who like pretty much defined the style that people like so many people are copying now but you can see when you talk with him or you know the guy who loves cars and shit and you can see that you know as a he, he loves the mechan mechanical stuff. Like he's got his understanding and yeah. love for like, you know, mechanical, how things work. And, and like, he's got this huge vi visual library of, of just how, um, he built his like, own cars. Like, yeah. Like, yeah, exactly. Like how, how to build things and how machines look like and all details of machines. And it's not just stuff that he's just, you know, Google and just put in this picture. You can see that there's this whole background of just loving, this kind of topic, you know, and this really yeah. shows in the work, you know, and it's something that just, you know, it just doesn't just come out of, of, of the blue, you know, and I feel like this is something that's what I was saying earlier, like trying to get that interest in things, because this is really what's going to transpire of your work and it's going to make it really stand out and, and, and is yep. really having this, this, this passion that, that comes through with your, your pictures, you know, but to go back to more like maybe actionable items of a portfolio, if you want to apply to a company like Builder or something, um, I would say um, for sure, like, don't like, I think it's good to show that you can do stuff that's uh, in the style for sure. Like, but don't just put only fan art and things like this, you know, like try to uh, put, put something of your own. And also in a, in a single portfolio, I think an, an advice I give too is that don't put in the portfolio anything that you would have like an excuse for, you know, I feel like sometimes I see portfolios of students or something and, and, and picture they're like, oh yeah, but this, I did that quickly. Oh, but this one I did like, yeah. uh, uh, this what this yeah, is don't old. Do that. Uh, this is, like, don't put the only pictures in your portfolio are just put the picture that you have no excuse for, you know, it's like, oh, this is your best of your best, you know, like yeah, things, yeah. so you can keep it concise. And, and, and there's really in the end, I mean, I definitely advise putting more than one picture, but sometimes one picture is really all it takes for an artist to suddenly be propelled in the, you know, in the, in the limelight, you know, you see some artists suddenly just drop a picture and everybody talks about that artist suddenly, you know? Yeah. And really, so you don't need to just have tons of shit, you know, it's like, just do a few really good things, you know, and, and try to really put all your heart in it. And, and, and that's really, I think that's the kind of stuff that's really catch the, catch, catch the eye, you know, of people who look at your portfolio. Yep. I agree. Cool. Um, yeah, let's let's uh, let's end up on that on that note. Cool. Let's get that let's get that bitch wrapped up. <laughs> that was fun, man. Dude, that was fun. I, I'm glad I had you here. Finally, yes. we could have a conversation. We haven't been talking for a while either. Yeah, yeah. I've been working too much. That's my fault. That's completely my fault. <laughs> yeah, I've been working a lot too. Um. Anyways, uh, dude. Awesome. Thanks for your time. Thanks for, yeah, your, no for, for being here with us Thanks and everyone who decided to join and ask questions. Sorry, we couldn't answer all of them. We kind of went to the rabbit hole of, and sort of like of tangents here and there, but that's, yeah. that's the beauty of, of doing this live. We just kind of go with the flow yeah. and uh, having fun with it. So, uh, but either way, yeah. Thanks guys for, for showing up uh, live and for those who are viewing this afterwards, just thanks for viewing it, I guess. <laughs> Until the next time. Peace. Yep.